All right. Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us today. Um, this, I think, is a, a, a suspicious uh, day for Africa with the uh, heads of uh, African nations uh, in Washington, D.C., where, where I am located just outside um, Washington, D.C., the heads of uh, most of the African nations uh, um, meeting with the U.S. president and under the uh, auspices of the Friends of the African Union, and, or under the under the auspices of the African Union, and of course we have uh, Morocco being the uh, first African nation to be participating in the semifinals of the World Cup, and we have a focus on the African participation in the worldwide teaching on climate and justice. And I have to say that when I uh, um, scheduled us for this day, I was not aware of either of the others. And of course, uh, I don't think too many people were expecting Morocco, uh, but uh, here we are. So I will um, turn now to my friend and colleague, uh, Evan Goodstein, the uh, director of the graduate programs of sustainability at Bard College to welcome us and to introduce the worldwide teaching. Well, um, thank you, David. And um, I wanna start off just by thanking our uh, presenters today um, who demonstrated terrific uh, leadership last year in the worldwide teach-in um, and also acknowledge the, um, the Lever for Change program um, from the MacArthur Foundation that provided the opportunity for us to work with them. Um, uh, and we are back again this year. Um, I don't think I need to explain to anyone on this call why. Um, we just um, had the, the COP27 meetings in Egypt, um, and, and frankly, they were very disappointing in terms of um, efforts at the national level to uh, move the ball forwards on climate change. And I think it, it makes it even more incumbent on uh, people at the grassroots um, to and civil society to 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 drive the kind of change that we need. Um, and um, so this is an initiative that comes out of the educational world. Um, and um, as you can see in the background of the slides of Tobias, myself, and David, um, last year um, we had 350 colleges, universities, and high schools from around the world. Um, who participated in the worldwide teaching on climate and justice. And I'm going to move because Africa is hidden behind me here. Let me see if I can. There we go. You can see the African map now. Um, and just tremendous participation from uh, communities, uh, uh, primary schools, high schools, universities in Africa in this initiative last year. Um, uh, I'm going to speak briefly about the plans for this year, um, and then we will turn it over to our to our presenters to, to learn about the African initiatives. Um, so I'm going to share my screen and uh, bring this up. Um, okay, so this is the effort in 2023, um, and um, uh, it's it's a very similar kind of initiative. It's the the vision behind it is stronger together. Um, and uh, our goal is to exceed our 400 or 350 institutions, um, move beyond that. Uh, last year, we mobilized 50,000 people. This year, we want to double those numbers um, and uh, really create a focus on, on teaching and uh, learning uh, for uh, building the army uh, that's going to be needed to, to solve climate change uh, and adapt to climate change around the world. Um, so uh, the, 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 the theory of change um, is that there are many, many teachers um, and students around the world who are growing increasingly climate concerned. Um, and we want to harness their energy to reach even more teachers and students um, and really inspire young people with the idea of working to stabilize the climate. Um, because this is not the work of a, a month or a year, it's the work of their lifetimes. And how can we prepare them as engineers and scientists, but also as artists and writers, um, communicators, uh, chemists, uh, economists, lawyers, 
um, to do the work that we need to do to transition to rapidly do a clean energy future. Um, I want to uh, point out that on our website, we have a fabulous one minute video and a terrific 10 minute video that go sort of deeply, deeply into how to organize a teach in. Um, and we'll hear more about that from our presenters today. So I won't dwell on that. Um, but the other piece here is we need you to sign up um, uh, and register your event. So here is the button on the page. Uh, that will take you to our 2023 worldwide teaching map. Um, and uh, we, we really uh, need signups to begin to drive uh, engagement um, around the world. It's taking a few minutes to load. Um, but, uh, and here we go. And it also, let me take it out to the world and not just North America there. There we go. Um, we have had no more signups in Africa than show here. They're all winding up in this little blue dot in the middle of the ocean for some reason. So we are working to solve that technical problem. Um, uh, so uh, that, but but we do need we do need these blue dots on the map. So please help us get there. Um, and with that, David, I'll turn it back over to you and uh, and uh, eager to hear the presentations from our uh, from our guests. Great. Well, thank you, Evan and. Uh... Um, I didn't introduce myself, but I'm David Blackstein. I'm the uh, co-director of the uh, Worldwide Teach-In and a, uh, um, th through Bard College. And now I'm going to turn um, to Ambika Opal, our colleague from the uh, Waterloo Institute for Sustainable Energy at the University of Waterloo in Canada. This, this truly is a, a global partnership, and uh, we've been working with uh, Ambika and uh, her institute in uh, supporting the, the projects that you'll be hearing about. Yeah. Thanks, David. Yeah, I'll do a quick introduction. My name is Ambika Opal. I am from the University of Waterloo in Canada and work for the research institute there called the Waterloo Institute for Sustainable Energy. And uh, we've been uh, working with Bard College over the past couple of years to help uh, find and support teach in hosts in Africa and South Asia. Um, and we do that through an initiative that we call Affordable Energy for Humanity. We've got an existing network of partners around the world. We work together on climate and energy justice projects and research. Uh, and we leverage some of these partners and have been making lots of more connections across Africa and South Asia as well to support the worldwide teaching on climate justice. And we've been really impressed by, by the events, by the scale, the reach, the impact of events across Africa that happened in March, 2022. And I'm really excited to, to see um, what happens in 2023 as well. I wanna say a really big thank you to Lover for Change for making this work possible and really, really big thanks to our partners um, who are here, Green Growth Africa, Green Africa Organization, African Network of Young Leaders for Peace and Sustainable Development and the many, many more um, who have participated in the teaching. Um, so thank you and really looking forward to hearing more uh, from the presentations today. Great, thanks. And we, we enjoy the the, we're working with you, Ambika. So um, we're going to hear from three um, African NGOs today, each of whom we've been able to uh, support um, with this uh, grant that we have through Lever for Change. And um, we certainly, the one of the things that, that I've learned in this project, as you will learn, is that there's some fabulous uh, um, NGOs in Africa that are doing great work and they are really stretching our money um, in, 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 uh, in, in great um, ability, but we're also certainly looking for more financial support so that we can be um, supporting these and other groups. So that's something that if any of you do have connections uh, with, with funders that we're, we're certainly interested in trying to do. So I'm going to turn first to uh, Juan Lo Michael, who is with the uh, group um, Green Growth Africa, and uh, she and, and the group are based in Nigeria. So um, Juan Lo, do you want to begin and um, share your screen and maybe introduce Thank you yourself so much. a little more? Thank you so much, David. Um, thank you, everyone. Hello. It's good to be here. Um, First, I'd like to thank the organizers of um, the Worldwide Teaching because last year you, you gave us the um, platform 
to stretch our programs beyond what we used to do. And, you know, we even went as far as, far as going to the grass, grassroots levels, to rural communities to get our work done, all thanks to the teaching. Um, so, uh, yes, back straight to my presentation, the, the, the Green Growth Africa uh, platform is a UNEP accredited NGO with a mission to drive sustainable energy transition, environmental education, and climate resilience in Africa. We operate a multidisciplinary network of about 1,500 professionals, researchers, students, youth from 140 countries across the globe. And we have volunteers in 10 African countries, in five five, 10 countries in five continents. And within five years, we have reached um, about 36 African countries through our programs and initiatives, inclusive of um, the worldwide teaching on climate and justice. And uh, we have different programs and initiatives. We have the Mentoring for Research program. We have our Echo Euros Initiative, Africa for Nature Health Initiative, Echo Knowledge Derivatives, and Green Good Africa platform. Um, so last year we had the worldwide teaching program in five African countries. We engaged 13 secondary schools. Um, and on an average, we, they, they spent 13 hours um, engaging students engaging each other on on the teach on climate justice conversations and in total we recorded 1370 students with 111 teachers we had 35 community members and in each sessions we had at least two breakout sessions and students were the panelists and they also um, had different activities such as debates they had dance they had drama they had poems and they had they had art displays as seen in the images um, here, cultural display here in Government Bilingual High School in Cameroon. And they also had um, arts, they, they drew on the spots depicting um, gas emission into the atmosphere. And they had conversations around these subjects. And we here we have um, five schools came together in Nigeria, in Ilorin, Nigeria, to um, have conversations amongst themselves. Meanwhile, they've been having conversations around climate climate change over the past five months before, leading to the um, worldwide teaching on climate and justice because we had orientation programs for all their teachers. So we had the teachers come in on webinars where we discussed with them on what was expected of him of them at each teaching um, at, at their teaching events. And this was um, used, we, what we used was the templates that was provided us by the worldwide teaching organizers. They provided us a template on how to organize teaching. So we use that same template to, to orient the teachers on how to engage their students. And you know, we emphasized that the students are to take authority, they are to take a, um, precedence of each um, event. And so this, the teachers just need to lead them, um, engage them before the events and so they, we had topics that we had we were giving to them and at the at the event they gave each student card it's they, they paired each student in groups and then they gave them cardboard carb, carbon papers where they ask them questions and ask them to write their answers on the papers and each group presented on each topics that we assigned to them you see here students together um discussing on the topic that was given to them and afterwards they came forward to make the presentation and here to this is school Nova, Nova pioneer secondary school in south africa the students were also paired together and they paired in groups and they had conversations and then they came together to converse after their presentation in this school they had they have 400 students and they were all engaged they were all ladies by the way female students so they were engaged and they came to the the um, the group themselves they had conversations around climate justice and then came together to uh, in a plenary session to discuss what they had what they had spoken about in each of their breakouts. This is another school in um, Kenya, Kaimosi Girls Secondary School in Kenya. They also had had displays. They had conversations around climate change. Um, this is still the school from Nigeria. And so after, after the um, teaching event, we were able to gain the recognition of the Square State Government in Nigeria, and they welcomed us to the uh, Ministry of Education. And so we went to the Ministry of Education in Kwara State, Nigeria, and um, they, um, they were impressed by the worldwide teaching how we were able to engage five different schools, public schools in Kwara State. And one major thing that struck out was the fact that we were able to go deep into a, a rural community 
um, that the students are not so um, vast in the subject of climate change. And so when we introduced it to them, it was welcomed. And we also engaged with their community leaders. This, is, this was when we visited some of the schools um, in Kwara State. And you know, we had we, we built on what the students, the, their teachers had already laid foundations on with regards to climate change. And because we wanted to um, have a, a system for con continuity, we didn't want to leave them that way. We established Echo Euros clubs, that environmental clubs in their schools. And that was why we went there. Um, that was around April, but so that was around June to this year. We went there to launch the, the clubs. And this was at the traditional leaders um, palace in Kwara State, where we engaged the community leaders. We, we, we made them understand why we are here, why climate change, why, why climate justice is important and why their students have to be engaged on the subject matter. And um, they also, I mean, they welcomed us and they gave us the award that they would, they would cooperate with the organization and allow their students, their, their children to, you know, and go to school more and they release them to go to school because most of these students they they work on farms they work um agricultural produce so they, they they rarely go to school as it were but we after engaging with them they, they gave us the award that their students will more will they release their, their children more to go to school and also get involved as it were um so our plans for 2023 we plan to engage um schools within our network within our Echo Euros initiative and our club framework. Uh, right now we have 10 secondary schools across five African countries within our Echo Euros clubs. So we intend to um, have them host teaching events across all 10 secondary schools. Also, we, we intend to extend applications from other secondary schools outside our network across different countries in Africa. Also, we realize that we realize the impact of having engaged teachers before the events. So we also plan to, to do that this year, engage teachers before the teaching events, ensure that they understand the reason why we are, we, we are having these conversations from the beginning and also ensure that um, outside the stereotype way of teaching, teachers teaching while the students just listen. This time around, the, the students are to take um, to take charge of the teaching events and they just have to just, um, you know, monitor them, supervise them, I mean, and lead them on what to do, basically. So we intend to do that as, as well this time around, ensure that teachers are engaged ahead of the teaching events. And I'm also glad to um, inform us that as a result of our um, our initiative around ed education for sustainable development, we've been able to win two awards this year and instrumental to these awards uh, is also the worldwide teaching events that was held and the impact it had on these secondary schools afterwards. So we won the Pratt and Whitney ESTEM awards and we also won the ed education for sustainable development award in Okayama, Japan. Um, so that's all I have for us today. Thank you so much for listening in and I'm happy to um, welcome questions. Thank you. Well, that, that is uh, wonderful. It, it, it's, it's really great just to see, <clears throat> I think probably just a little part of, of what you are doing and, and, you, and your group. So, so thank you. So are there um, any um, specific questions for uh, um, Juwanlo before we go on to our next presentation? Okay, well, if, uh, if there are questions, uh, yeah, uh, go ahead, please. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I. I mean. I, I, it sounds really cool what you what you're doing, and I'm wondering here. Um. You know, it it seems like this these events and this this framework you've developed is uh, offering great opportunities uh, from a kind of global economic justice point of view, not only, you know, paired obviously very closely with questions of climate and, you know, it's, but I don't know. I mean, I just want to say it's very inspiring to see the work you're doing. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm interested in any reflections you'd have on uh, specifically how the, these events are using 
climate activism as a kind of hopeful vector for other questions of economic justice in, in African countries. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so um, specifically this um, event, the teaching for, for climate and justice, um, well, the conversations we had I mean, the, 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 the events we organized with these secondary schools, specifically with regards to these rural communities, we realized that um, going down to the grassroots, these um, community leaders, for instance, understood the essence of why we are, it has to be a behavioral change with regards to, to, the, to the climate, with regards to the environment, and how that it is instrumental to whatever change they need to see, even in their children. In the education of their children in the community and and um, in, towards the development of their states as a whole and yeah so um well the i, I believe that the the impacts are uh they are they are, they are all, you know it, they may not be so obvious now but i mean the foundations have been laid the seeds have been sown and we hope to see the results great thank you very much good 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 response so, um, Joelle, should we wait for Patrick, or do you want to go now? What's your preference? Um, good morning, David, and everyone. Uh, Patrick is not yet, um, he has not yet joined, but I think that um, we can do it. Okay, uh, or, or we can have you go next, but that may run against your other time. But why, why don't we begin with you now and, and uh, um, um, Bunzin, I apologize. Uh, um, Joelle uh, needs to go to another meeting before the end, so we're going to have have this group go next. So um, I want to introduce uh, Joelle Mboa from the uh, African Network of Young Leaders for Peace and Sustainable Development. I think it's my favorite uh, organizational name and also one of my favorite uh, organizations. And um, we will. Uh, Turn to uh, Joelle to, and they they have a, a large number of teach-ins uh, as uh, he will talk about. So let's turn to Joelle and uh, feel free to to share your screen when you're ready. Okay, David. Great. Okay, I think you I see. Yeah, yeah. Can, do you want to put that into presentation mode? There you go. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, so uh, good morning, good evening to everyone, because here we are, uh, I think we are for, yeah, 25 past four. So uh, we are going to uh, present, I'm going to present, I'm Joel Evo, I'm the Secretary General of Africa Network of Young Leaders for Peace and Sustainable Development. I'm going to share with you um, the experience of uh, Africa Network of Young Leaders for Peace and Sustainable Development in uh, the organizing, organization of climate teaching. So first of all, we are going to see what is Africa Network. Africa Network is a Pan-African network of organization and network operating in Africa. So uh, for the nature of positive vision, that is uh, to, to have and preserve the catastrophic love of biodiversity and put nature on the path of recovery for present and future generation. So um, quickly, so we work uh, in the nexus climate conflict and migration, and uh, we want to address drought. We want to address um, the poor natural resource management conflict, also climate, and also uh, migration. So ANIFOP is the African Network of Young Leaders for Peace and Sustainable Development implements uh, four uh, programs, the integrated program to combat divert, uh, desertification, land degradation, drought and ecosystem safeguard, the collaborative um, program for transparency and result, the program, a program on migration, also a program on SDG, also a program on youth, women and entrepreneurship, a program also on violent extremism, and also a program of gender, sexual reproduction, health, and nutrition. 
and we have also a program uh, on the um, on innovation uh, solution and technology. So, so we are accredited by uh, the Economic and Social Council of the UNED, UN. We have also um, accreditation by UNSCCD and also in the frame of global compact already for secure and regular migration, also uh, in accreditation on the frame of the United Nations Environment Program. So uh, in the frame of uh, the tick in events, so our goal was to help move uh, people from climate depression to a sense of agency engagement and leadership on climate solution, and also uh, help um, Africans to move from despair to determination to get them to change the future. So um, we have first of all in the frame of tick in uh, organized a regional africa regional tick in event that was uh, basically online and uh, it took place uh, from the 12th to 13 may 2022 and uh, it uh, gathered uh, around uh, 300 participants from across africa they were edified by a dozen of speakers coming from several continents So um, we have also organized uh, in the frame of uh, the teach in event, uh, what we call Africa country teach in events. They were held from May to August, 2022 in uh, 21 African countries. So you have the list, uh, Algeria, Benin, Burundi, Central Africa, Republic, Cameroon, Chad, Congo, Democratic Republic of Congo, Cote d'Ivoire, uh, Guinea, Conakry, uh, Kenya, Sierra Leone, uh, Malawi, Mali, Nigeria, South Africa, Togo, Zambia, Zimbabwe, Somalia, and uh, Tanzania. So uh, around um, directly, uh, we thought uh, around 1,040 participants coming from various uh, backgrounds, uh, civil society, students, uh, youth, women elected, and uh, also uh, some uh, government officials. So uh, the topics that um, the the topic were about uh, please excuse me. Anyway, I hope that you will not. Um, I don't know what I touch. It's okay. We we can we can still see okay. it through through Any, the okay. Uh, <laughs> through, through so, the uh, here. Thank you. So uh, the topic were about climate change causes this effect and opportunities for young people, climate science and climate change impacts, climate justice in Africa, climate finance, also um, energy, climate, food security, climate education, a new model uh, for more impact biodiversity and uh, forest conservation in uh, Congo Basin and tropical Africa and also uh, nature-based and regenerative solutions, and uh, also uh, ecosystem and community-based adaptation, farming system and the climate change, boosting the resilience for more sustainable, inclusive work. And uh, we, have, uh, we had also uh, the sharing of experience of uh, youth in uh, the area of climate justice, and environment conservation and restoration. So, um, so concerning now uh, the working area, so uh, that is basically what we did. So the content of uh, our regional and country team events, and uh, also uh, we have, we we saw who were the participants, and also the country that we touch, and um, so now we should say that uh, we have set uh, during uh, the implementation of the team in a climate justice community that is now working with the new deal uh, for nature and people community. Um, uh, basically, uh, we move uh, civil society uh, organization, including young people, children, young people, and women from uh, various backgrounds in uh, various areas. So uh, our first area is advancing policies. I'm not going into details to, to make quick. 
So uh, we also mobilize um, communities, uh, uh, radio, uh, community radios, and also uh, television uh, to talk about uh, the, uh, the climate justice and also um, ecosystem uh, restoration and also uh, conservation. So uh, we also engage um, in various uh, UN uh, regional international uh, organization in advocacy. We have also, uh, we implement also um, advocacies at local and national levels with various stakeholders. And um, we also uh, engage in art for climate and also art for biodiversity. And uh, yes, so we have also, uh, the second area of our intervention is capacity building and also uh, mentoring. So uh, we mobilize, um, we mobilize uh, young people and our targets in uh, the various country in Africa in uh, capacity building, as we have done uh, with the TIT in and uh, also uh, we mobilize them also, we mentor them also. So uh, these are some images. So online, we, we can, we do that uh, online and we do at that also uh, in present, as you have seen. We have a third area that is uh, related to green entrepreneurship and also nature-based solutions. And um, we have um, set, we are implementing um, now a various platform on green entrepreneurship, also nature-based solution that uh, we are mentoring. And uh, we also uh, bring uh, several as association and also uh, organization to green their portfolio, to make it, um, to green their portfolio, make, making their objective to fit to biodiversity conservation, also restoration, and also uh, to uh, in commit in the climate uh, justice. So um, yeah, you can have some pictures of uh, the restoration of degraded land. And also, we are also committed in uh, tree planting. We also mobilize um, communities in alternative solution uh, for climate and also uh, biodiversity. And uh, yes, there are some images related to green entrepreneurship and also, uh, yes, so this is it. So we could commit, we engage also uh, women, so at grassroots level for uh, climate and also uh, for biodiversity conservation and restoration. So uh, these are some images of how uh, climate justice community and also um, the New Day for Nature and People uh, Coalition. We have, we have been working, mobilizing uh, these uh, various organization, also uh, various communities, yes as part of uh, these communities. So these, um, yeah, non-timber products. So um, how to help uh, communities, women, and also uh, to, to engage in entrepreneurship uh, through uh, these uh, means. So uh, these are some of uh, our action on the ground. Yes, this also uh, the the water you sent. So uh, we com we are committed, yes, to uh, to 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 turn yes uh, the negative effects of this plant uh, into positive, uh, uh, generating um, uh, means of uh, means of subsistence and also uh, entrepreneurship uh, for young people. So we are. The, the, the fourth area of our intervention is also networking. So uh, we work too much uh, through networking. And uh, yes, uh, we uh, focus on um, a North-South cooperation and also a South-South cooperation. So uh, we are also uh, committed with various uh, universities um, uh, for climate justice and also um, for, uh, for nature conservation, also restoration. So um, yes, so we are also committed um, in uh, resources uh, for SDG uh, climate, uh, climate justice, nature conservation or restoration. So this is, we, we are also uh, uh, in, on, on the ground, we are also committed uh, through our various uh, network of, um, to work with uh, traditional leaders for conservation um yes as part yes of their uh, of their customs 
So this is it. And we are also, uh, we have also uh, a part of our action that focuses on, um, yes, um, uh, green solution and also, um, yes, renewable. So uh, we work with, um, as this part, yes, to see how to, uh, to set uh, some innovative solution, yes, for nature uh, protection and also restoration. So um, one of our major area of also intervention is uh, yes, as you have you 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 may have noticed a uh, human right um, based approach. Our uh, intervention are uh, human right based approach and also uh, and gender approach. So uh, we make sure that uh, women and uh, women are involved uh, all through the process from the beginning before the project, uh, during the implementation of project and also after the project. So we would like uh, to thank, um, we would like to thank the Abad College and also uh, the University of Waterloo for their support in the organization of uh, this Africa Articulating event. And uh, it has, uh, yes, permitted to change, to, to bring hope in several communities. So I, just, I have just to highlight that um, uh, they, they, they take in where not just uh, in French, in English, but was also in French and uh, also in various uh, local dialects in uh, various communities uh, where we have um, held those teaching. So thank you very much and really sorry for uh, the technical issue. All right, there we go. Okay, um, I said, Gilbert, do you have a question that you want to ask? Go ahead. Yes, yes, please, I have a question. And uh, my question uh, is based on what I have heard. As Joel uh, generously told us that the action on the ground that uh, they are doing, for that reason, I would like to ask him, which country, countries in Africa uh, could you please highlight that uh, you are improving wonderful? As you mentioned, 21 countries that uh, being presented in your online event that you did last time. Thank you. Okay, um, thank you very much uh, for the question. So I should say that uh, the 21 countries that um, are, we have highlighted in the presentation are the 21 countries where we held uh, climate cheating events. We are not the only countries where um, we do operate. Um, we have also, I should say that um, the uh, political context and also uh, the engagement of uh, the government are not the same in a country or another. And uh, the way that uh, the government uh, may be uh, involved, uh, may be uh, sensitive to uh, the climate uh, justice and also nature conservation and restoration also uh, uh, may have uh, more or less impact on the work of uh, civil society organization. So it is very difficult to say where do we have improvement, but uh, I should say that uh, there is a real commitment of uh, young people of uh, civil society organization uh, since they are capaci they, they, their capacity are built. So they involve and we, just, we don't just leave them uh, alone. So what we do is that we mentor them through our various focal points and uh, to make sure that um, the, um, they are training or they are teaching that uh, we have brought to them, um, they can be able to, uh, to sustain it and to go and also in their community in various ways according to, uh, to their means to also uh, teach the communities. So there is uh, a real engagement and commitment of uh, young people and also of, of our targets uh, after our trainings. Um, so the improvement uh, will not uh, depend basically on the target. The improvement will depend more on how um, uh, the, uh, the community, for instance, accept yes, uh, the message uh, that is brought to them and also how uh, do the government also uh, cooperate or not. But um, we should say that uh, there is a real commitment and also engagement of young people and also uh, civil society organizations. So for me, it's really difficult to say this country uh, 
do uh, those more improvement than the other. So uh, that is the reason why um, uh, one of our area of intervention is also uh, advancing policies, because you not just focus on training young people, because they may be trained, but it is really important that um, they face also uh, the government, they face also private sector, and they work in uh, coalition because the coalition is really important to uh, make our goal to reach. Because if we don't have a solid coalition at the local level, it will not be uh, really uh, effective, the action. It's a reason why, um, if you are very well, I didn't have time to uh, explain it deeply, but we have uh, constituted in various communities some network because uh, we have realized that uh, it's really important for young people to work in network. So we may have uh, offline networks or some young people that, are, uh, that can work uh, in their community level to make uh, some policies to advance at their level. So that is it. It's the reason why it's also very important that um, uh, the uh, international community work uh, uh, with the regional stakeholders and also um, the national stakeholders. So that is the, um, the, 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 the work that we have been doing, trying to uh, uh, advocate at various level, try to advocate as we can. Uh, we use also, um, uh, we use also uh, the asset of the fact that uh, we are connected with also uh, some uh, network of uh, in Africa and also in some continent, some young people of civil society network. Yes, to make that uh, our action all together uh, be heard because we don't work uh, in isolation, but we work uh, all together for things to improve. So uh, that is how I think that uh, things are going to improve. Thank you very much. Thank you, please, could you? Uh, uh, grant me one minute to, to appreciate you, but uh, uh, we all know that uh, actions speak louder than words. Maybe please, could you give us example of one, two, three countries that uh, you can, you see that uh, you are really, really improving. Thank you. Yeah, I, I think we're, we're going to have to actually leave that question because I do. We have one more presenter, um, so we, we can maybe get back to that with all of the speakers. But I do want to introduce and, and thank you, Joelle, for for that presentation. And, and uh, we will send the uh, presentation without the scribbles on it to to everybody who is here. Um, so now let's turn to our, our final um, presenter. Um, Bumzina David, who is the leader, founder and leader of Green Africa Hope. Again, I love the idea of both green and, and, and hope associated with Africa. So please go ahead, David. Or, or, or I'm sorry, Bumzina. Yeah, thank you so much, David. Thank you, everybody. I hope uh, I'm going to really speak uh, a good English because I'm a French, I'm a French speaker and I'm really learning English. So I hope you will get me very well. <laughs> so uh, let me begin my presentations by talking about uh, Green Africa Hope Organization. So uh, as I was saying, my name is David Bumzina from Cameroon, from the Far North region, and I'm the founder and CEO of Green Africa Hope Organization. So we uh, focus, in fact, we, the, the issues that we focus on are largely climate change and justice. So, this is the 
Uh, Umzima, we're, we're having trouble hearing you. I'm not sure if, if there's a, a technical thing at, at your end, but maybe you want to. Uh oh, did we just lose him? I believe looks we like did. Yeah. Looks like we just, just lost him. Um, so uh, while well, well, we're hopefully waiting for him to join, uh, um, Joel, maybe if you're still with us, you could uh, then respond to the, the previous question about uh, um, countries where you feel like your, your organization is, is really making a big impact. Yes. Okay. Um... So sorry uh, for uh, the, uh, I'm going to leave, but I'm going to reply. So I should say that um, we have also uh, Cameroon, we have also uh, in, uh, in, um, in Central Africa. So we have uh, Cameroon where uh, things are getting uh, improved. But I should say, I should not say that things, things are improving uh, with the action of young people. So. Uh, we can highlight, for instance, in South, uh, uh, Central Africa, we can highlight Cameroon where things are getting uh, improved. And uh, if we take, uh, for instance, uh, West uh, Africa, we can have, um, we can have yeah, Senegal also uh, where, uh, yes, the government is also uh, acting uh, uh, toward uh, ecosystem uh, restoration and conservation, and also uh, climate uh, justice. So, um, in um, in the uh, Eastern Africa, Kenya also, yes, Kenya also, with young people that are really uh, working uh, uh, too much, and also uh, the government and also the president that uh, is really involved, uh, hearing uh, the young people. But I should say that uh, in Kenya, Kenya uh, seems to be also uh, one of uh, the best example where you can have uh, a flow communication uh, between uh, young people and also the president of the Republic. Because um, generally what we do is uh, we engage uh, stakeholders at various level, but having also uh, the president that is uh, committed that can take part to uh, uh, a meeting or meetings organized by young people and also civil society organization, this also uh, is a mark of, of um, his interest uh, toward, uh, yes, the, the cause. And uh, yes, yeah, these are three countries that I can say. But also I should say that in DRC, there are a lot of, um, uh, uh, there, there's a lot of uh, commitment for, uh, from civil society and also uh, young people uh, uh, toward uh, the question that uh, the government is not uh, also, also uh, always uh, moving quickly uh, in the step. So that is how I can, I, I can answer. So I can uh, summarize by saying that there is a real uh, co a commitment of young people and also civil society organization, but uh, improvement are regard, do not depend directly uh, to young people or civil society organization They are doing their best, but improvement depend uh, mostly on government. How uh, do the government involve? Uh, involved or would like to um, associate or also uh, with uh, civil society and also, uh, yes, uh, for that question. So uh, that is how I can uh, answer. Thank you. Thank you, Joel. So um, we seem to have uh, lost our, our final speaker. So um, Maybe, uh, Joanlo, do you want to respond to any of the, the questions that were uh, yes, addressed maybe, to Joel? Yes, maybe of... one before leaving, though I'm late, I will try to, if there's one question I can answer before leaving. Yeah, I, I think let, let's, let's, let's th thank you, Joel, and I think we'll, we'll give uh, Joanlo a, a, an opportunity to talk about how people could uh, get um, involved in, in Green Growth Africa and, and uh, where they feel they're making an impact. Okay, um, anyone can get involved in Greenwood Africa through volunteering. We have, we have various volunteers across, um, across the world. And um, we also have the mentoring for research program. This is for 
um, graduate, um, is a graduate program for postgraduates, those that are having their master's degree or undergoing their PhD programs and need uh, mentors to help with their research. So we pair them with mentors across the world. That I mean, this, these mentors are those who are also experts in the field that uh, these people are carrying out their PhD um, research or their master's research. So we pair them together and, and make sure that they are being followed up, they are being supervised virtually um, as they as they embark on their projects and we also have the um, echo euros initiative here we we empower secondary school students across africa with um, we, we we put how you call for application they apply they uh, propose a green solution to an environment to an environmental issue that has been identified in their community and then we with the support of our of our sponsors we provide funding of up to 500 dollars to each of these students with the most innovative um, proposal and then they, they implement their their project over a course of four months and you know we we ensure that they have peer-to-peer -peer webinars with other peers across africa so yeah these are the programs that we we, are, we have ongoing at the moment and the most, anyone who wants to get involved can go to our website. The call for applications for our Eco initiative will soon be out and um, secondary schools are open to apply. Thank you. All right, thank, thank you very much. Um, so it looks like we unfortunately have uh, um, lost our, our final uh, speaker in, unless he <laughs> miraculously rejoins and i apologize as um, you've noticed there are some uh, technical issues that, that we've been been dealing with here but we will send everybody a uh, um, a copy of the recording we will sit we will get the presentations from the different uh, presenters including i think that uh, um, bunzima will um has, has a uh, a presentation that we can share. And I guess I just want to, um, and also um, to say that we do encourage each of you to participate in the worldwide teaching this year. I know many of you have already um, registered and we will be having these conversations um, regularly, or uh, Tobias, our, um, um, Education coordinator has put uh, some links uh, into the chat um, that um, for how how to connect. But we we have these sessions every Wednesday. We're going to take a, a break now until January 11th. But then on January 11th, we are going to be talking about um, or just really giving people a chance to share what they're doing on the teach-ins and get some feedback from others as, as well of, as ourselves. If you'd like to join us um, January 11th, Wednesday at uh, 10 a.m. and 9 p.m. Um, Eastern Standard Time, uh, New York time. And then the following week, we'll have a presentation about engagement of academies of arts and design in the teach-in. The week after that, we will be um, talking about our climate uh, theater playwriting contest and how you can incorporate uh, um, plays of less than 10 minutes um, into your teaching event. The following week, that will be the last week in January, we'll be talking about our Youth Climate Summit that is going to be taking place virtually on the 4th of February. Um, from 10 a.m. Eastern to 1 p.m. And all of this information is on our website. So, um, Eben, do you have any final words you wanted to share at this point? Well, I just, once again, a, a huge uh, word, uh, note of uh, thanks and gratitude uh, for the leadership that we're uh, seeing from our partners um, in Africa. Um, you know, none of this work is easy. Um, and uh, climate change is, um, in, you know, it seems removed in some ways from people's everyday experience um, and is not always perceived as the most pressing problem. Um, uh, and yet, 
often it is, right? Often it's the problem that's lurking behind the drought or lurking behind the food shortages um, or lurking behind the conflict. Um, and so uh, this is a broader conversation really about sustainable development and the SDGs. Um, solving climate change is part of solving the kind of tangled and wicked problems of, of poverty and underdevelopment. Um, and um, we are uh, excited to just sustain this effort um, and uh, continue uh, you know, changing minds or engaging minds um, with thinking about, about solutions to these, to these problems. So um, stay with us. Uh, please do join us uh, in all of these youth events, um, our social media for Climate Action Chip internship, the Youth Climate Summit, um, our ongoing Wednesday efforts, but it's all building towards a day of a global engagement by educators and NGOs on or around March 29th. So um, uh, happy holidays to everybody since this is our last event for a while um, and um, look forward to change in 2023. Great. Thank you all for coming. Thank you, everyone.